my dear respected elders, brothers, Jazakumullah for joining us once again. Inshallah, firstly, I want to start off with where we left off last week. So we were talking about the challenges that we face, our children face. How can we save ourselves from these trials and tribulations? So we're living in times in which there are many fitan, many trials, tribulations, many challenges. The Prophet ﷺ, he prophesied, he mentioned many fitan and many trials and tribulations that will occur. The first fitna, does anyone know the first fitna to afflict this ummah? It was, it was the martyrdom of Sayyiduna Usman anhu. So since then, many, many fitnas have been coming. And if we look now, there's fitan out there in abundance. The Prophet wasallam he said, killing will become common. The killer won't know who is killing and the killed won't know why they were killed. Even now we see, sadly, whenever the month of Ramadan comes, our Muslim brothers and sisters, they are attacked very brutally in masjid e aqsa in Palestine. So the Israeli forces, the, the soldiers, they just, whoever comes in front of them, they just kill them, they just hurt them. So they don't know who they're hurting and those that are being killed, they don't know why they're being killed. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Zina will become common. Interest, sood, it will be spreading. You'll be able to save yourself from interest, but you won't be able to save yourself from the negative effects of interest. The sood ki be barkati se or nahusat se, you won't be able to save yourself. Prophet ﷺ said, time will come, women will be wearing clothes but they will be naked. What this means is, the clothes will be either very tight or they will be see-through. People will commit sins, they will disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will commit crimes, everything like this, it will become common. All these sins and disobedience of Allah will become common. In the ummah, there will be lots of ikhtilafat, differences. And everyone will stand their ground. They will say, we are on the right. And you know, when you have arrogant people, they don't listen to anyone. And then it's very difficult for them to unite when they, when they see themselves only as being right. Music, singing will become common. It's very hard. Even now we see to protect our ears from, from haram. Prophet wasallam said, these fitan will come and they will come like the waves of the ocean. So one will come, it won't come to an end, and another will come. And some will come, they'll, they'll make the previous fitan or fitna to look small. So they'll be constantly coming, these trials, tribulations will come. And a fitna will come, people will think this is very big, but then it won't come to an end, and another one will come which will be bigger. So many minor signs have already emerged of the Day of Judgment. And who knows, the, the next one is probably maybe one from among the major signs. The Prophet wasallam he said, Bu'ithu ana wassa'ah kahatain wa ashara Abu Dawood bis sababa wal wusta. The Prophet wasallam said, me and the Day of Judgment have been sent like this. فَمَا فَضْلُ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى How much more in length is one than the other? So the index finger, it ends a bit before the middle. So from the emergence of the Prophet wasallam till the Day of Judgment, this is how short the time is. So 1400 years have passed by and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many more years are to come. So when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned all these sins and all these fitnas, this doesn't mean that we say, okay, this is going to happen, so let's commit these sins. No. We need to save ourselves and save our children from these sins and from these fitnas. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق لا يضرهم من خالفهم there will be this group from my ummah, they will always be on the haq. And those that are opposing them, they will not be able to harm them. So even now we see many Muslims across the globe, 
they are, mashallah, propagating the deen. They, they, alhamdulillah, their iman is preserved. They are inviting others as well. And uh, we have many people that weren't on the, the path or they weren't practicing, but mashallah, they changed their ways, mashallah. Why? Because they lived the life of disobedience and they saw the nahusat, they experienced the negative effects of living a life of sin. So they thought that why shall we follow this way? Let's follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا In the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the best example. So if you want to be saved, you know, the truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever you are, you can be saved. Allah aapko bacha sakta hai. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadeer. Allah has power over everything. You can be in whatever situation, but even then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even amidst, even among the fitnas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can protect you. So what we need to remember is we are not majboore mahas. Our hands are not tied. We, hum jo hai, we have this willpower. We can make our choices. We need to make those right cho choices. Irada jo hai, this is something that we have. We need to make those right, right choices. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, a time will come. It'll be very hard to practice deen. It'll be like holding on to fire with your fist closed. So who knows, some Muslims across the globe, they might be going through this time. Or if they aren't, then probably we can start seeing the signs of this time and the effect of this time. But look at this. During times of fitan, if you hold on to Islam, what is the reward out there for you? For your one good deed, you will be rewarded the deeds and the reward of 50 companions. 50, 50 companions. Subhanallah. This dunya hasn't seen people like the Sahaba. Subhanallah. But during times of fitnas, if you hold on to your deen, it'll be, it'll be a big challenge for you. But remember, the reward will be great. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ كَمَا بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا فَطُوبًا لِلْغُرَبَى That when Islam started, it was seen as being غريب. In Urdu, غريب means poor. But in Arabic, it means alien, strange. So when Islam started, they saw Islam as being strange. The beliefs, the practices of Islam as being strange. So a time will come this time will come again. Again, people will see Islam, Muslims, the beliefs, the teachings, the practices of Islam being very strange. But the Prophet wasallam said, Fatuba lil ghuraba. Good news, congratulations for them, ghuraba, for them, for them Muslims. So today even we see like people reading namaz and then some people they look at them in a really strange way. So inshallah, just finishing off with where I left off from last week. How can we like uh, save ourselves? The scholars, they mentioned there's two things we can do. Number one is we need to have this confidence and we need to understand that Alhamdulillah, Islam is haq, Allah is haq. Our religion, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the right religion. So we need to have this confidence and we need to be proud that we are Muslims. No other nation has been blessed like this Ummah has been blessed. So this is one point and one point is we need to make dua. And this is a beautiful dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-fitan ma dhahra minha wa ma batan. Seek Allah's protection from the challenges out there. The hardship, the trials, the tribulations, the fitnas that we can see and the fitnas that we can't see. So read this dua all the time, standing, walking, sitting, learn this dua, teach it to your family members and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. No one will be able to harm you. So now inshallah, I want to speak about this blessed month of Ramadan now. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to fast in this blessed month of Ramadan. Even these children are fasting. Fasih, he's a young lad, he's been fasting. 
So, mashallah, these children, they've been fasting as well. Fasting is not fard on them, but they still come. They still fast. We can't force them to come to the masjid, but they still come to the masjid. Subhanallah. So, good on them. So, Allah has given us the ability to fast. Allah has given us the ability to read our namaz with congregation. And we listen to the Quran. We read the Quran in Salatu Taraweeh. We are very fortunate our du'as are accepted in this blessed month of Ramadan. Every night there's a call that is there anyone seeking forgiveness so that I may forgive him? Is there anyone that wants food, that wants sustenance so that I may give him? Is there anyone that's in a difficult situation so that I can lift that difficulty from him? So Alhamdulillah we're in the second Ashara, isn't it? And what is the second ashara? Maghfirat. So the scholars, they say that the first 10 days, they are mercy. That's because there's some people that don't have much sins on their shoulders. So for them, from the beginning of Ramadan, they attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have some people that have committed sins. So they have to fast 10 days and then they get maghfirat. They are forgiven. And there's some people that have committed lots of sins, so they have to fast 20 days and then they get the glad tidings that they are free from Jahannam and they will enter Jannah. So Alhamdulillah, we're in this second Ashara and uh, also in the last Ashara, we've been told to find the night of power, Laylatul Qadr. And we don't know if we will go on to see Ramadan 2023. Many of our loved ones that were around last year, they're not around this year. So we need to value each, each second, each, each moment of the month of Ramadan. And we need to exhaust ourselves in seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى That we will make you happy. Yeah, so look at the love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has for his ummah. Will he be happy if his followers go to Jahannam? No. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam always used to make du'as for his ummah. So this Ramadan, we need to understand that it's not only about fasting, it's not only about praying, it's about seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And there's so many asbab out there, there's so many means, excuses out there and means for us to be forgiven. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. Man qama Ramadan, man qama laylat al-qadr imanan wa ihtisaban. Whoever fasts, whoever stands in worship, whoever stands in worship during the night of power with faith and seeking reward, his sins are forgiven. Minor sins are forgiven. For your major sins, what do you have to do? Tawbah. You have to repent. So we have so many like uh, chances out there. The night of power is better than 1,000 months. So if you find this night, then it's like you've been worshipping for a lifetime or even more than a lifetime. So these are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last year, I don't think there was iftari. I think it was only... Uh, brother Izhar used to come from Maghrib and uh, Brother Ahmad used to come, he used to be very quiet and we used to drink water and uh, one, two khujur and that's it. And Alhamdulillah, this year you've got iftar taking place in the masjid as well. If you feed a fasting person, you will enjoy the reward of the fasting person without his reward being reduced. Your sins will be forgiven, you will be freeing your neck from the fire of Jahannam. So look how easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it for us. So if you look at uh, the month of Ramadan, if you fast, it's like you fasted 70 days. You keep one fast, you've kept 70 fasts. You give one pound, you've given 70 pound. You, if you look at i'tikaf, um, mashallah, many brothers have already uh, made intention and even me, Iftar time, I've started talking about Etikaf now. Someone who sits Etikaf during these last 10 nights, he gets the reward of two Hajj and two Umrahs. In a year, you can only do one Hajj. But here, in 10 days, you're getting the reward of completing two Hajj and two Umrah. 
So this Laylatul Qadr as well, you all know why we were blessed with this night. The Sahaba would hear that there was this man for 1000 months, he was fasting during the day and praying during the night. Sahaba said, we can't catch them up. So we were blessed with this night. That if you worship Allah, then this night is like you've been worshipping for 83 years, even more than 83 years and four months. So look in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. You do one good deed and whoever brings one deed, they will get 10 similar to that. So you give one pound and it's as if you give 10 pounds. Yeah. In other than Ramadan, this is the verse in the Holy Quran, you perform two units and it's like you performed 20 units. And the truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can multiply this however many times he wants. Yeah. So it all depends on our sincerity. So look, you'll get this reward after you complete the namaz, isn't it? The two units. But look at the Holy Quran. Look with the Holy Quran. You don't have to complete your recitation. You don't have to complete the verse. When you just say Qul, for the Qaf you get 10 deeds, for the Lam you get 10 deeds. Hey, ye Qur'an ke fazail me riwayat motabar nekiyan das das milengi tum ko ik ik harf par karte rehna hai tilawat ab tumhe subh ho masa حفظ قرآن کے لیے اللہ نے تم کو چنا So look, even with regards to this, like one letter you get ten deeds. Imam Ghazali has said, Sayyiduna Ali رضی اللہ عنہ, he narrated this narration. You will get ten deeds for one letter when you read the Quran by heart without wuzu. If you read the Quran with wuzu, you will get 25 deeds for one letter. If you read in nafal prayer, sitting down, for each letter you will get 50 deeds. And if you read in the nafal prayer standing, for each letter you will get 100 deeds. So, karni thi maghfirat to bahane bana diye. Jannat me momino ke thikane bana diye. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's made it very easy for us. Look, in a janazah namaz, if there's 40 people, مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ مُسْلِمٍ يَمُوتُ فَيَقُومُ عَلَى جَنَازَتِهِ أَرْبَعُونَ رَجُلًا لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا شَفَّعَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ جس کی نماز جنازہ میں چالیس آدمی بھی ہوں جو نماز جنازہ پڑھنے والے ہیں ان کی سفارش اللہ پاک مرحوم کے حق میں قبول کرتا ہے اور وسط سفارش اللہ مغفر لحیدنا اللہ has made it so easy for us ان اللہ لیردا من العبد ان یأکل الاکل فیحمدہو علیہ اللہ راضی ہو جاتا ہے اپنے بندے سے جب بندہ کھانا کھاتا ہے اور اللہ کی تعریف کرتا ہے when you eat food and you praise Allah Allah becomes happy for you so Allah has made it so easy for us so that individual is very very unfortunate who isn't forgiven in the month of ramadan and his biggest crime is that he saw ramadan to be just a normal month and he didn't he didn't try so that person is very very unfortunate who is deprived from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jibreel alayhi salam he was asked by the angels that, okay, what gift has Allah given to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So Jibreel alayhi salam said, Allah has forgiven them, but four people. Someone who drinks alcohol, someone who's disobedient towards his parents, someone who breaks ties, someone who has malice in his heart. These kind of people, they are not forgiven. You know, parents, they are a bigger sabab, bigger excuse for us and reason for us to be forgiven. How? Even then Ramadan, how? In i'tikaf, 
10 days, you get reward of two hajj, two umrahs. But if you just look at your parents, you get the reward of hajj. Maqbool hajj, subhanallah. You look at them 100 times, Allah ke khazanon mein koi kami nahi hai. Allah Rabbul Alameen, He will grant you the reward of completing hajj many, many times. So we need to remember this with regards to joining ties, sila rahmi, our relatives, we need to meet them with a smile on our face. If they are in a difficult situation, we need to be part of that gham with them. We need to be with them in that difficulty. If they aren't well, we have to go and visit them. This is sila rahmi. If they receive good news, unki khushi mein bhi humne shariq hona hai. We need to be part of that happiness with them. We need to say something, we need to give them something to keep them happy. This is Sila Rahmi. Today it's become very common that over little, little things we see brothers not talking to his dad, brothers not talking to his mom. I don't go to his house. This is basically you're going against the teachings of the Quran. You're going, te you're going against the teachings of the Prophet of Islam. And the truth is, if you are doing this, then you are harming yourself. You know, if you always have a grudge in your heart, you're reliving that time. If you forgive, you're having mercy on yourself. You're cleansing your heart. And inshallah, your ibadat, your du'as will be accepted. You'll be forgiven on these kind of nights. Best thing to do is leave this ego so that you can make the path to Jannah easy for you. And my brothers and sisters, just finishing off, we still have time, never lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And if you have relatives that aren't in good terms with you, just approach them, say to them, look, end of day. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يدخل الجنة قاطع قطع رحمي کرنے والا جنت میں نہیں داخل ہوگا Someone that breaks size is not going to go Jannah. So you know what? Forget it. Forgive me. I forgive you. Let's move on. And when you are asking forgiveness from someone, don't stop mentioning the list. I did this. I said this. I did this with you. It will become distance from you more. I said something, did something that hurt you. Please forgive me. But even those that are committing these sins, even them, there's time for them to repent as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them too. And Allah rabbul alameen, may he make us from among the fortunate, those that are given the good news that you are forgiven. Allah make us from among those that when the end of Ramadan comes, we are from the muttaqoon, we are from the pious, and we could continue to live our lives as uh, people of taqwa.